Good morning, everyone. Welcome you all to the monthly webinar series of uh, conducted by ABLE. ABLE is the Association of Biotechnology Lent Enterprises uh, formed in 2003. We just completed uh, 19 years. Uh, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Suresh. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of ABLE. Uh, we welcome you all for joining this uh, webinar. So as biotech industry as have many, many segments, we have been doing uh, this monthly webinar series, which we started during the lockdown in 2020 on various topics and uh, related to vaccines, uh, food, uh, biodiversity loss, and uh, uh, even uh, com innovative companies presenting with bio clusters from different parts of the world, different parts of the country presenting. So this time it's a novel topic. Uh, this is the first time we are doing something on a new uh, another emerging area in biotechnology which is the uh, marine biotech segment uh, so i hope you'll all in, uh, you know get good insights to this sector which is uh, from some of the finest speakers in the country on this uh, just to give an example so currently the sector is uh, in india is very small it's about 200 million dollars whereas globally it's uh, estimated it's about uh, for $4.5 billion, and it's projected to grow to more than $6 billion. Of course, our speakers will give you more uh, uh, numbers and more what about the potential. So uh, before I hand over to our president, Mr. Krishnan, I'd just like to welcome you all once again. And uh, for a change, I understand a lot of students from the marine fisheries institutions have joined. So we have made a provision for all of you to get a participation certificate Provided you sit through the whole se seminar, and you know, you know, we we will know when you are attending. Okay, uh, so uh, that that's an light event. So you can expect a participation certificate, and uh, hope uh, we are doing this uh, seminar in association with uh, Nova Science, uh, which is one of the leading companies. They have many products tailored to this industry, and with the Institute of Chemical Technology, uh, ICT, uh, Mumbai. So well, you'll hear more about it. Over to you, uh, uh, Mr. Krishnan. Before that, I would like to, like, to request you all to look at our website and uh, those who are not members of ABLE, enroll for ABLE membership so that you can connect to more and more such uh, emerging segments also within the biotech sector in the country. Uh, over to you, Mr. Krishnan, for an overview uh, of what you see as the potential of the sector in the next few years. Krishnan? We can't hear you. Krishnan, you are muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Very, very good morning. Thank you very much, Suresh. Uh, well, definitely, this is uh, one of the sessions which I've been very much looking forward to something unique and different. As Suresh already men mentioned, this is an emerging area, something which we feel biotechnology can play a critical role. So I have uh, two hats here to wear, one as the ABLE president and also uh, sort of supporting Novozymes being a director of stakeholder relations over there. Thank you so much for Dr. Thorat to come out with this thought of having this particular session. And I would call it very, very apt for this segment. And thanks to Suchitra and team from Novozymes for putting this together. The also, Calling it circular economy is something which is very, very critical today from a biotech point of view, and especially the seafood processing segment, which is emerging in a big way. And using biotech tools, how can we ensure that we are able to reduce the overall pressure on the environment 
increase competitiveness, stimulate innovation. That is the key today. And that's what I think we would like to play an important role from an Ozymes perspective. And this, we believe, will definitely boost the overall economic development in this particular segment. Yes, as Suresh mentioned, this is an emerging area, something we all need to pay attention and then use the biotechnological tools. Novozymes, just to let you all know, even in the past, in the animal feed segment, we were the first to launch phytase to protect the environment. At that time, I remember very well, it was still, the industry was not very much favorable to that because they didn't believe that biotechnological tool can make a big difference. At that time, I remember, thanks to the mad cow disease, availability of dicalcium phosphate was a challenge. And the industry came back to us to say, how can we support? And indirectly, we not only supported the industry to replace dicalcium phosphate, we also ensured the importance of protecting the environment. I am giving this story only to let you all know, India is still at a nascent stage in some of the areas to use the biotechnological tools. This is where I think people like Dr. Torat, together with Novozymes, can make a big difference. With us, I would like to welcome the very, very distinguished sort of speakers for this session. All, all of you who have definitely taken time to be with us here today. And also all the participants, and Suresh mentioned about the students, you are the future of tomorrow from an Indian point of view. And it is critically important events like this, webinars like this is not only giving you the understanding of biotechnology, understanding the challenges which are facing segments like this, and how you as students can be more innovative and play a critical role. And also we would say increasing the entrepreneurship in India is the one which is critical to develop the bioeconomy. With this, I would like to hand over back to Suresh. Thank you very much. I presume that this particular event will be very, very interactive and we look forward to the progress of this segment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kishan. So I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Suchitra Tripathi from uh, Novozyme. She's the head of future food, connect and innovate. Uh, and she's the moderator and she has put together uh, this event. And so next hour or so back uh, to you, Suchitra to take over from here and then uh, go through the proceedings. Uh, welcome Suchitra. Thank you so much, Suresh and Krishnan. Uh, that was really kind of you uh, to say those words about me. Um, a very good morning to everyone and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, focus more on circular economy in seafood processing industry. Um, as mentioned by Suresh, I'm playing the role of a moderator today. And when I'm not doing that, uh, I'm leading the future food team uh, uh, from Nova Science. And, uh, uh, in today's world, if we talk about uh, circular economy, it's extremely important to make sure that there is continuity in the food chain and uh, we do not run out of resources. And today's topic is designed for everyone directly or indirectly related to seafood processing uh, industry. To know more about biological solutions that can enable, uh, get more out of the resources and raw materials which in turn would support a sustainable food chain and uh, hence circular economy. It's my pleasure to uh, invite our uh, guest of honor, uh, Professor Thorat, uh, uh, Senior Professor ICT Mumbai, to say a few words um, and inspire everyone who has uh, participated or joined today uh, to know more about this. Over to you, Dr. Thorat. So you are on mute. Thank you, my dear Suchitra Tripadi. And it's always uh, wonderful to be associated uh, with Noza and through you. And in fact, you are also an inspiration for many of our faculty and the students at ICT, the way you uh, help our students in uh, designing some of the experiments and motivating them, doing a lot of research in biotechnology in general, and off late, you have been pushing our students to get into biotechnology and fish processing. So thank you for that. 
is your initiative and uh, jointly we decided that we should conduct something of this type so that uh, we look into possibilities as what Krishnan said in the uh, couple of minutes back is that there is a tremendous potential for uh, valorization, value addition to the fish catch so the provided you know you bring about certain components of biotechnology besides the conventional technology for the preservation, canning, and for the processing of seafood, uh, so that you know we 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 bring everything into the circular economy. A large large quantity of waste, which goes you know uh, back into the sea, you know which is which is which is hazardous in a way, uh, and, and I can tell you from my experience that you know the anything uh, uh, from the livestock including the fish there is nothing a waste you know you, it's just you need to understand where all you can use this uh, uh, waste whether it's a skin product whether it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's another head products or a tail or fin products there is a tremendous value besides the core value of 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 canning fish processing drying technology and so and so forth you know. so Thank you, Suchitra, for you know, agreeing to uh, work on this project. And I also thank for the support that is given by the uh, Mr. Narayan and Suresh, uh, the uh, CEO of ABLE, and of course, the GS Krishnan, uh, the uh, president of ABLE, and also the former uh, uh, head of the Novozymes. So circled economy for sea seafood processing, uh, it talks about value addition using biotechnology. So when I look at into the data, what is the fish catch? What is the potential? What is being done today? And I see there's a huge gap. There's a big shoes to fill in. But the huge gap, you know, uh, is the, is, is waiting for the people to grab those opportunity, either through, you know, industrialization or promoting the entrepreneurs. And, and I can tell you for, for sure that it's just, more than 15 million tons of fish catch is there right now in India, if I'm correct. You can correct me if, if it's a little bit here and there, but I'm sure it is somewhere in between 15 to 16 million tons of catch. Now, this is this is still a big number, you know, considering the India being third or fourth as far as the, uh, the sea catch, seafood catch is concerned, the fish catch is concerned. But of which, how much is processed and how much is goes west? The number says that about 30% goes waste, 70% is goes for the, most of it for the fresh consumption, very little, less than 20% is, is goes for the various other types of processing, including 17%, which goes for the dehydration drying technology, which is again done using a very uh, old technology of uh, sun drying, where a lot of uh, inputs can come up uh, in terms of, uh, looking into various aspects of hygiene and other things where you can bring about much more value to the fish and uh, fish products. So, uh, and I think the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the tremendous potential which I see in terms of providing the protein source, and, and this is a much desired protein uh, source. And I was, uh, we were working on a project, you know, where one of my students has been working on a mola carpet, you know, and these are the fish, which is uh, which is a small fish. Uh, um, uh, these are very popular in the uh, area of uh, Odisha, and I think this is the best source of of proteins, you know. And uh, for a variety of reasons, you know, uh, this this has been neglected, and whatever has been available in the market is, is of a quality which is not acceptable for uh, as, a, as a supplementary food. And so we came up with the uh, uh, process where, you know, a two-step process to valorize mola carpet and increase the value to almost three to four fold, you know, a, a product which was being uh, hardly sold for about 100 kg, uh, rupees a kg, there's a sudden demand, you know, the moment you provide a great quality of the product. So mola carpet is now selling at about 300, 400, 500, and, and, and at, at time it has the, uh, market of about 800 rupees a kg. And so is the case with the uh, silver prawns and mackerels and so on and so forth. But what is main thing which I would like to highlight here is the is, is something which is in the nascent stage. Uh, Nozam took the lead, but somehow it's the Institute of Chemical Technology and of course the ICE 
ICAR and other fisheries institutes must pitch in to look into the role of enzymes for further value addition. And these includes the, uh, the use of proteases and all those lysines and fissins, poppins and, 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 and subtilins and trypsins. And the, the potential is tremendous. So where does the potential lies? The potential lies in, in the descaling and de-skinning of the fish, you know, the peeling of shrimps, and then the production of uh, caviar and the uh, fish sauces, and not to mention about the various uh, flavors and pigments which can be recovered as, 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 as some of the diverse molecules from the fish waste, you know. So I was curious to know, you know, where, why, why we are not, uh, why we are lagging behind in terms of you know, adding value to the, the, the fish catch. And I'm sure uh, in, in, in years to come, the, uh, the, we will be able to put into much efforts in terms of uh, the bringing about the, the biotechnology components in the processing so that the uh, um, value addition can be done. Uh, sometime back, you know, uh, the Bill and Gates Foundations, I remember about two or three years back, uh, as you know that uh, some of my students have bagged uh, innovative projects from the Gates Foundation, about five of them, you know, and we just submitted one of the projects on uh, the, uh, the, the fermentation. Uh, and, 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 and so you look at the eastern part of India, you know, their main staple diet is rice, rice and uh, fish. So we would think about, you know, supplementing this food with, with added with, with, with the vitamins and uh, further fortification, natural fortification. And yes, there is a scope for doing this. And eventually we will like to bring about this also uh, uh, so that you know the, uh, the conventional way of uh, our food habits uh, gets a little bit spruced up and you know, there is a much more value addition. So I welcome everyone, I welcome all the, uh, the faculties uh, who uh, Suchitra has chosen very uh, meticulously. We have one of the dynamic uh, uh, personality from ICT, my own colleague, uh, Professor Rekha Singhal, uh, uh, she, she is the head of the food engineering and technology. I'm sure you will have uh, some uh, meal from her in terms of circular economy, seafood, seafood processing. Then we have Balange from uh, ICAR, uh, and then Amit Satyan Ravi, uh, who is the regional manager of food, protein industry, Nozimes, and of course, uh, Dr. Shiv Kumar, the College of Fisheries in Mangalore. So these four or five speakers, I think we are going to enjoy their uh, uh, the exposition and I will not come between you and them. Uh, so I welcome once again, uh, everyone who is attending, all the ICT students, students from outside the uh, ICT and all the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the MPDA people who have joined from various regional offices. And I also thank to the MPDA for uh, agreeing to support. Somehow we could not get in touch with them earlier. But off late, we came that uh, we, we, they, they, they came on the board, and I really thank you to the MPDA because we need the support of MPDA as much as the support of ICAR Fisheries. Uh, uh, Mr. J.K. Jina, particularly, I would like to thank one of the tall, towering personality from the ICAR. He is the Director General of Fisheries. And I welcome uh, Mr. Joshua Jena also to this forum. So I will not take much time before you. I wish everyone uh, to have. Uh, a wonderful one and a half hours uh, from now and uh, enjoy it's your time. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Suchitra, for inviting me as, as, as the guest of honor on this program. And I wish all the best for everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Thorat. It was really uh, great to hear you, uh, those numbers and how biotechnology can play a role. Uh, moving on, it's my great honor to introduce to our chief guest, uh, Dr. Joy Krishna Jena. He has a very rich experience in research field, more than 30 years uh, in aquaculture and conservative genetics. He has been holding the position of Deputy Director General Fisheries at ICAR New Delhi. More than 200 research papers, several books, many, many, uh, uh, you know, awards. I mean, it, probably it's uh, it, it's not going to do justice if I just leave here, but but for the sake of our, our uh, topic that we would like to focus, 
I would like to say thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Jaina, for joining us. We are really honored to have you as our chief case in, in uh, today's webinar. Uh, we would like to hear from you about, uh, you know, ICAR, some inspiring uh, stories from you, uh, how uh, we can play a role, each, of, each one of us, uh, in enabling a circular economy in, in seafood processing uh, industry. Uh, over to you, Dr. Jena. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Madam Dr. Shushitra Tripathi. Uh, first of all, I would like to profusely thank you uh, and organizers uh, for inviting me, uh, Professor uh, Dr. B. N. Tharurji, uh, Mr. G. S. Krishnanji, speakers of today, Dr. Ravi Shankar, uh, Dr. Rekha Shengal, Mr. Uh, Amit Ravi, Dr. Shiv Kumar, uh, participants, students, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor and privilege for me to be here this morning. Uh, let me tell you, uh, I am. I do not have much expertise on processing. Uh, I come from a sector, the production sector. Uh, over the years, my expertise has been on production, mainly on aquaculture. Of late, of course, I have been working on some aspects of conservation genetics. Uh, so in that regard, definitely the aspects of biotechnology, we have been dealing on every, uh, every front. Uh, but as because I have got the platform here uh, to speak before industry partners and student friends, I would take one minute to introduce about the ICAR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Uh, friends, all of you may be knowing uh, we have, uh, ICAR has uh, 113 institutes uh, organization working on different sector of uh, agriculture, agriculture, horticulture, animal science, and fisheries, one of them. And we have eight research, research institutes working on uh, maybe aquaculture, open water fisheries, genetics, and uh, deemed university from where Dr. Ravi Shankar will be speaking. Uh, so all those eight institutes we have been working on from reproduction uh, to the processing value addition and all. And a dedicated institute, Central Institute of Fishery Technology at Kochi have been working on harvest and post-harvest uh, aspects of fisheries. So I'm sure Dr. Ravi Shankar in his uh, presentation, uh, uh, he would be giving detail about the work being done at uh, CIEFT. Uh, he was the former director of CIFT, so he would be able to do justice uh, more than me, uh, definitely. Uh, anyway, thank you again. Uh, greetings from me and the uh, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Uh, we have been uh, uh, now, uh, I'm sure in next one, uh, one and a half hour to two hours, you'd be speaking on every front of circular economy. Uh, when you, uh, this is a subject, uh, being talked loudly over years, uh, recent, at least recent years, we do understand the issues before us. It is not only fisheries, uh, but every sector, uh, whether it is animal science or even the crop uh, horticulture and so on and so forth. The worst, uh, whatever generated, how do we effectively use uh, is a concern before us. Uh, Dr. Thorot was speaking uh, also that uh, we have been producing somewhere around 14.5 million ton or 15 million ton of fish today. And uh, given, uh, uh, given the production coming from uh, mainly the fin fish is the major pr uh, production sector mainly from the aquaculture. If you talk of uh, our domestic consumption and all, if you see live about the cities, bulk of the fish goes to the uh, rural areas where people purchase one kilo, two kg of fish. And uh, maybe every alternate day they may be purchasing. They waste to generate uh, their, whatever they, at the home level, they may be cutting those pieces and cross uh, whatever waste generated, they may be throwing somewhere. But I come from the village. So I know even the, they know the value, even the villagers know the value of those waste much more than we at the, uh, who are in the cities, we talk, but I have seen even the, uh, somebody uh, purchase one kilo of fish, whatever the waste scales, intestine, and uh, even the gills and all, and they don't throw here and there, rod pond or any other place. They take those waste, 
and they have some trees are there, uh, mainly the fruit trees, especially the, I've seen the citrus, the lemon trees and all. Uh, they try to put and uh, they, they say that the fruit will come large, much bigger. And this is also expensive in our backyard at Delhi. We have a lemon tree and we do also because I come from the, uh, from the village. So, but when you talk of recent uh, years, uh, what happens with the, uh, even at the homestead level, nobody like to take the fish to home and process or uh, dress it. Uh, people like to get it totally dressed at the market itself. The waste generated in different cities, we do not have uh, that much of any any formal formal uh, uh, strategies to process those. Uh, just one sec. Uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, even of late, what we have been seeing during the Corona time itself, many of us have been depending on the e-market, for example. So they must be processing huge amount of waste. What they do, we do not know exactly at this point of time. Uh, when you talk of the shrimp industry, at least we know the uh, when we uh, when our commodity like shrimps goes for the external market, we have at uh, one point all those uh, uh, waste are. Uh, uh, collected or maybe can be used for the stream cell. We know that how effective it is for chitin or chitosan production has been one of the major uh, waste utilization. But that is only ex exoskeleton part. But when you be had uh, the head portion and the uh, whatever the uh, uh, how how it has been utilized. Of course, in recent years, people are drying it and using as a as a component of the fish meal or shrimp meal and all. But how effectively we use, we we are not sure. We do not have a proper data available. How much quantum of this uh, stream waste are utilized for again plowing back for the feed uh, uh, as a as a component of the feed component. We do not know at this point of time. When you talk of we we produce, for example, at this point of time, about eight lakh ton plus shrimp at this point from the aquaculture itself. And uh, almost uh, maybe 95% goes for export market. So in that context, uh, uh, how much of this waste, uh, when we talk of shrimp uh, uh, utilization and all, uh, about 50, 55% we know goes as a waste. How do we use those waste uh, is, is a challenge before us and how effectively we use. Uh, I do not know uh, how many process, how many factories are there for production of uh, chitin and chitosan. We have been telling that the chitin and chitosan is one of the uh, high value compounds which can be used at industrial uh, level. Uh, of, of course, over the years, there has been several uh, several biotechnological tools which we have been using for waste uh, utilization. For example, uh, Dr. Thorot was mentioning about enzymatic methods for whether with the regard to the recovery of collagens from the seaweed processing factories or uh, even, for example, enzymatic production or dewittering uh, of the, uh, the fish uh, when, you, uh, when you talk of fish protein concentrate. Uh, we know that uh, how important this technology have been. We know these technologies are available, but how effectively we have been using this technology for industrial scale use. That is a major concern before us. For example, we have been talking of uh, extraction of high value compounds. This has been a talk over these years for, with regard to whether antifreeze protein or uh, for example, gelatin production or uh, uh, several of the compounds that we like to produce from, for example, not fish, maybe seaweed. It is in one important aspect. Uh, last few years of work, we have been able to produce at least 20 such uh, high value compounds, whether it is uh, anti-stressors or anti-arthritis, maybe uh, anti-obesity and so and so forth. Several of those, uh, compounds we have been able to not only able to uh, publish but also commercialize several of these things but how effectively we can take to a commercial level that is more important one or two industry uh, producing something may not uh, serve the purpose when you are talking of circular economy our uh, aim is not just uh, talking that some products can be produced but how effectively we are utilizing are important at this point of time when you talk of biotechnology all of us know 
uh, adulteration is a major issue. Uh, when you talk of, uh, for example, paste product, so, uh, surimi product and all, uh, when you have sausages and ham and all, uh, people, for example, you like to have uh, uh, paste product from X fish, but uh, people uh, ad uh, adulterate with low value fish, uh, telling that it is a high value from the high value fish. And the technology before us, for example, the DNA barcoding technology with CO1 genes, you will be able to definitely uh, identify if there is any adulteration is there. Uh, how effectively we utilize these biotechnological tools are important at this point of time. Uh, when you talk of again, uh, uh, processing and value addition, Packaging is an important component, definitely. We have been using several uh, synthetic polymers over these years. We know the concern of uh, synthetic polymers. So it is high time that how do we use the green packaging technology, green packaging material from the, whether it's from the chitosan or CUD polysaccharides and all, probably those are some of the important areas we need to be uh, thinking how effectively we take those technology from the lab level to the industry level. Uh, even uh, today, all all of us know the uh, the hurdles what we come across peeling the string itself. Uh, it is a, uh, so much of manpower uh, is involved. Many of uh, you from Bempeda, uh, you may be uh, speaking about that. We have been talking of uh, enzyme assisted peeling technology. Uh, some some work is being done here and there, but how effectively we do use in a large scale are important at this point of time. When you are working with the, again a pest product or other value addition, whether it's a post harvest, uh, uh, post harvest or a cooked product or uh, uh, ready to eat product and all uh, pathogens, uh, we know at this point of time the major concern maybe when you keep your packaging is not proper and all how it is a, uh, how it is problematic at this point of time. So detection of pathogens and all we have been using several tools and all biotechnological tools at this point of time. Recovery of pigments, probably this is one area uh, we have not been able to do much. Uh, we know the, uh, the power of the uh, tools, biotechnological tools at this point we have. Even for example, all the time when you talk of marine fish, we say it is rich in uh, pupa, uh, high uh, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, omega-3 and all. Uh, how do you recover those? Uh, is it uh, preparation of omega-3 itself? Uh, can it be an industry itself? Uh, so how do we utilize so that we evaluate at, uh, at the end, end of the day? Uh, it is important that not only production, we talk at this point of time, when you look at the future from 15 million ton at this point of time to 22 million ton in next uh, five years, government of India has set a target. When we are again uh, setting the charge debt for the next uh, to, uh, maybe 20 years or 25 years, India would be uh, looking for a production uh, of somewhere around 27 million ton, uh, 27 million ton. Uh, uh, so at this, uh, when you are likely to increase another, to add another 15 million ton, the waste generation will be huge amount of waste will be generated. And I'm sure after 10 years or, uh, uh, or so, we will see that the bulk of our uh, consumers will like to take fish at a processed form. So there will be a possibility that all those waste are generated at one place or collected at one place. So it is important that uh, how do we aggregate those and uh, take to, uh, to uh, some centralized point and all and how, how do we process are so important at this point of time. Yeah, it's extremely and, important to know, sir, how uh, you know, one bottleneck we see today is how this, uh, you know, waste that's generated can be consolidated and feed to the industry for value utilization. It's, uh, it's really inspiring to see so many technologies available today. And uh, we also looking forward to work with ICAR who can be the, you know, year for the, or the spokesperson for the industry. Uh, who can take it forward to the government uh, with some of the challenges and uh, some of the issues uh, that can be mitigated uh, for enabling this. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Suchitra. I think uh, I have taken a little more time than uh, what you uh, gave me. Uh, when we speak, probably we don't uh, see uh, us. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, no, anyway, we... uh, th 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 thank you very much for the opportunity you gave. 
uh, I think this is an area that we need to be working, talking more detail in coming days. We will have other opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We are all so passionate about the topic. I mean, we always, uh, you know, uh, talk very passionately. So, uh, Dr. Jena, thank you so much. I know you took out time from your some of the meeting that's still going on. Uh, gave us that time and we be, be, be really happy to have you and look forward to more uh, interaction with you in future. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Um, great. So uh, moving on to our, our topic, we have uh, lined up few speakers, very distinguished uh, speaker in this area of uh, fisheries, food processing and engineering. And our first speaker is Dr. Rekha, who is heading the Food Engineering and Technology Department. Uh, Dr. Rekha will be talking about circular economy in seafood processing industry and role of biotechnology as an enabler. She is elected as a fellow uh, Indian National Society Academy in uh, 22. Uh, I, you could see her, uh, you know, her achievements uh, as, as, as a member of international bioprocessing. Um, without any much ado, I, I would like to hand it over to uh, Dr. Rekha. Uh, over to you, Dr. Rekha. Thank you, Suchitra Ji. I'll share my screen. I'll share my screen. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> it happened yesterday. No, no problem. So uh, we, we will have, uh, when we talk about circular economy, I don't know, it's a uh, lot of you might know uh, the word, a uh, lot of you might get a little more detail into that understanding what really uh, can be done to enable this circular economy. So it's, it's not about just a linear food chain. It's about how all the waste and the byproducts that we generate today go back into the source. Like, for example, if you are harvesting from the sea, with all the consumption and food product development, and finally what comes out of as a waste can go back into the sea or go back into, into the soil uh, so that the next chain of the process or the food chain can start again. So, yeah, yeah, she can start sharing the screen. Right. Yeah, I can. Can I begin, please? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for your kind words of introduction, Suchitra Ji. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, uh, put some points on the role of biotechnology as an enabler of circular economy, which is nothing but, as we can see in the top uh, right, is reusing, remaking, recycling, making, and use, uh, uh, using. So this is the whole chain and this is what is circular economy. I uh, would like to go to the next slide, please. I think I'm only sharing it, yeah. If you look at India, we are endowed uh, with a very long coastline. We have abundant rivers, canals, reservoirs, ponds and tracks, and which makes us the largest, second largest producer of fish in the world. And the capacity which I could uh, get from various websites is around 9.6 million metric tons. Of this uh, 9.6 million metric tons, the processing is currently at around 23%. We also export a lot of uh, seafoods in the form, frozen form. Uh, and the market value is about USD 5.8 billion per 1 million metric tons. And there is also an immense potential for exporting value added products. However, this processing generates a lot, large amount of waste to the tune of around 2 million metric tons and includes viscera, fins, scale and bones. Now, if we have to use this byproducts, then what are the issues? What are the main issues? As I see it, there are both negative issues and there are positive issues for utilization of this byproducts. The negative issues are the operational cost, the environmental issues, and lack of standardized protocols for extraction. There are also losses of fresh and high quality, potentially exploitable bioactive compounds. 
However, if one looks at the positive issues, then there is a contribution to sustainability and environmentally friendly disposal methods for valorizing high value compounds from this bioprocessing, from this by, uh, bycatch and processing byproducts. And these include probiotics, bioactive metabolites, enzymes, and antibiotics. There are many new prospective applications in nutritional, pharmaceutical, and industrial sector, preferably by using green technologies, which not only enable preservation, but also enhance the quality and extraction efficiency. This particular slide tries to highlight the mapping uh, of uh, across the supply chain where the losses occur. I believe that an understanding of this uh, chain, supply chain, and the point of losses is crucial to the development or planning of circular economy. Since I could not get the data from India, I tried to, I, I got some data from US, and one can see that out of the 8.4 million metric tons comprising about 3.6 from domestic and 4.8 million metric tons from import, we get a pro they get approximately 2.1 million metric tons of edible portion. And by the time it comes through the supply chain and reaches the consumer, the losses are around 50% at about 1 million, um, 1 million metric tons. So this is a huge uh, loss. And we can see that the losses are uh, varying. Uh, there are, they are different at handling and processing about 1.01. And we see the maximum losses at the consumption level are uh, significantly higher at processing and packaging as well as distribution and retail. Now, uh, what is their interplay between circular economy and industry? If you look at this slide, we can see that there is a flow of information and finance of, uh, you know, both ways from industry to circular economy. But the flow of feedstock, as we can see, is, uh, you know, from the industry to the circular economy. Why do we need circular economy? We need the circular economy. Uh, I mean, for, for we need the circular economy. The drivers of circular economy are climate change, policy schemes, and market awareness which enables essentially the principles of recycling, reuse, and remanufacturing. However, for the industry to indulge into circular economy or to take circular economy seriously, they need to monitor, they need to gather the data, they need to innovate and also automate. And the purpose is essentially to mitigate the climate change, then the, which is the driver for, uh, which is the driver for uh, circular economy, market awareness as well as policy schemes. So, so, so this is very important. And while uh, working towards circular economy, the, there, is, there, there has to be an evaluation of commercial viability. For example, if the process is not commercially viable, the principles of circular economy may not be sustainable. And also we need to be able to preserve our resources because they are highly susceptible to both microbial as well as enzymatic uh, spoilage, oxidative spoilage. What are the kind of byproducts that we get? Now, if you look at this particular slide, we can see that uh, you know uh, you get various type of byproducts differing in their ratio, uh, weight by weight. For instance, if you look at the frame comprising ten to twenty percent, skins and fins around one to three percent, bones around nine to fifteen percent. These could be utilized for the manufacturing of collagen, gelatin, protein hydrolysates, and bipeptides. Similarly, if we look at the head comprising 15 to 20%, we can see proteins, protein hydrolysates, and bipeptides. Scales comprising 10 to 20% for collagen and bipeptides, and so on. When we talk about seafood, each seafood is different. And they differ in their composition as well as the ratio of the byproducts uh, as a function of weight, I mean, in terms of weight by weight. So if we look, I have given here three examples. We have crustaceans, mollusks, and cylindrate and echinoderms. Let me talk about one of them, which are the, which are the mollusks. 
so if you look at the shell it comprises about uh, uh, 75 to 80 percent body parts and organs along with it and this shells could be used for the manufacturing of bioactive peptides the body parts and organs again for enzymes protein hydrolysates biopeptides and flavors on the other hand if we look at the viscera the non edible portion and the ink bag uh, the 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 weight by weight i'm not sure what is ink bag by the way uh, this is this comprises about 25 to 40% and this could be utilized for the manufacturing of enzymes, bioactive peptides, flavors, and taurine. We can see similarly for crustacean, where different byproducts could be utilized for value creation. One can see over here, shale and tail for shell protein, carotenoid protein. Then we have, again, protein hydrolysates and enzymes from viscera, and so on. Now, what are the convenient, what is happening currently with the byproducts and what could happen? So if we look at what is happening conventionally, we see that it is being used to a certain extent in the manufacturing of fish meal, fish oil, fish sauces, and fish silage. To a limited extent, it is also being used for the uh, uh, production of nutritional supplements and pharmaceuticals like EPA, DHA, some lipids as well as some minerals. However, there have been a lot of uh, inputs uh, where people have been trying to investigate uh, newer methods and some of them are on, some of them which are ongoing. I'll just take it uh, in a random manner. One of the biggest application where people are working is in energy production. So if the bio, if biodiesels are bio oil production from fish oil, uh, this could be done. There are also uh, efforts at trying to uh, uh, develop some anti-cancer drugs. Then chitin and chitosan, uh, as has already been mentioned by Dr. Gina earlier. We have uh, uh, many other pharmaceutical and ingred uh, industrial ingredients for nutraceutical, cosmetic, and agriculture applications. For instance, we have fish protein hydrolysates, bioactive peptides, hyaluronic acid, and a lot of people across the globe are working on low-cost systems for managing and valorizing the fish fishery discards, primarily on industrial and biomedical applications, including collagen and gelatin. And at the end, we can see there are uh, uh, applications in the area of aquaculture and bioremediation are uh, also happening. So, so these are some of the uh, applications as we can see. Now, it's creating a problem. It's not going further. Uh, I'm stuck here. Must be on your screen only, your system. So. Ha, huh, but uh, it is um, it is stuck. I am only sharing it, but I I am unable to go further. Maybe uh, while we are trying to fix that issue, um, we can also talk about uh, even. Uh, I can you know, stop sharing slides. and yeah. I can I can stop share and share again. Yeah, sure, ma'am. You can do that. Yeah. That flow actually uh, would be lost, yeah. When it comes to enzyme technology or biotechnology, uh, how do you see uh, what can be done from, from being from academia? You know, what are the research being done? What could be a possibility there? Yeah, that's what I was wanting to talk about. And uh, it's again stuck. Uh, oh, we, maybe, uh, what do we do now? We, we, you can stop sharing. You can talk about it. We will uh, we'll share from our side. Okay, ma'am. Please. Yeah. Yeah, over, over to you, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Okay. It's again... Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Now, how this can be done? Uh, this could be done through various enzymes in seafood processing. As already indicated, that 50% of these are co-products or waste. And enzymatic hydrolysis can minimize this waste co-products by converting them into seafood extracts. 
which are not only rich in protein, uh, which are rich in protein, uh, including marine amino acids, they are also low in fat. And this could be, this could have applications in food, feed and pet food. The next slide, please. So this, this is one area where it could be done. And let us look at some of the enzymes which could be used. So we have microbial transglutaminase, which are essentially uh, centering around designing the texture of surimi and other uh, fish-based products. We, uh, also for improving the rheological and film-forming properties of fish skin gelatin, as well as for the production of fish restructured boneless fillets. So these are the uh, transglutaminase are essentially they work by cross-linking the proteins and they also have implications in physical and sensory properties of surimi. Microbial proteases, as I have already indicated, they are involved in the hydrolysis of fish proteins and uh, the, uh, some of them, for example, cod and headhog fish frames. Uh, 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 attempts have been made even at pilot plant uh, uh, level and in a batch process. Same is the case with production of carotenoids and fish protein hydrolysates. While microbial lipases have been used for the synthesis of PUFA enriched fish oil. Now there is a lot of R&D which can be done around these enzymes for applications in seafood processing. The next slide, please. Yeah. There are many other interventions of bioprocessing in seafood sector. One of them being the separation of fish eggs or roe uh, from the ovaries of the fish, which is the roe sac. And ideally, uh, people have been doing it to a limited extent by chemical uh, hydrolysis, but then there are a lot of losses and the quality is bad. So enzymatic separation, this is a very interesting area. Uh, already we have, uh, sir had spoken about reducing the bitterness of fish protein hydrolysates through plastin reaction, then enzymatic de-scaling and descaling. Uh, but here we need cold adapted enzymes. This is again one area where a lot of work could be done. And fish silage uh, and poultry feed, this, is, uh, this has been uh, going on. But one another interesting area is production of renewable calcium carbonate in seawater from muscle shells using proteases. I think this, uh, these uh, require a lot of academic uh, inputs. The next slide, please. One example, of a bis uh, we have to go now beyond chitin and chitosan actually to convert it into a further value added product, which is chito-oligosaccharides. These chito-oligosaccharides have uh, immense uh, 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 beneficial properties as we can see antimicrobial, antiviral, ACE inhibitory, among many others, including fat reduction and hypocholesterolomic. Now, these are conventionally produced by acid hydrolysis, but suffer from drawbacks of lower production yield, generation of toxic compounds, and they also contribute to environmental pollution. Now, these could actually be produced by Oh, the, these drawbacks can be overcome by enzymatic processes. Now, these enzymatic processes can be very specific. We can obtain uh, a COS of desired molecular weight. But as of now, they are not very cost effective. And this is again an area where uh, research is required. For instance, column reactors with immobilized enzymes, continuous reactors, membrane systems to separate uh, you know, the uh, chito-oligosaccharides of defined molecular weights. The next slide, please. So just to give a flavor, we have a batch reactor on the right, which is nothing but a reactor where the enzyme and the substrate are both present under controlled conditions of temperature and pH. And then, you know, whatever you get, you have it as chito-oligosaccharides. On the other hand, if we look at the continuous production, we can see that there are two steps in this reaction, in this production. So we have a substrate, which is a chitosan solution. We have an immobilized enzyme reactor, as we can see on the far left. And then, you know, uh, 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 partially hydrolyzed one is then pumped again into an enzymatic reactor. Uh, we allow the reaction to take place. And then these uh, oligosaccharides are separated according to their molecular weights by ultrafiltration membranes and further processing by concentration drying. The next slide, please. The next slide, please. 
yeah i will uh, i i think i'm exceeding my time yeah the, the earlier one quickly please earlier one yeah there are many tools which are used in circular economy and i have listed a few of them of which i will just focus on one of them which is ecological footprint uh, of water and carbon material and this could be carried out at various scales micro meso and macro similarly we have monetization of cost and benefits which is a tool for monitoring circular economy and it it involves cost benefit analysis again at micro and meso scale the next slide please the next one yeah uh, there are plenty of approaches to reduce the food chain waste and it starts building and implementing strategies at sea food harvest and right up to the supply chain leading to the consumers now due to paucity of time i'm not able to explain all these but uh, uh, we can probably discuss uh, later uh, the next one the only uh, yeah so finally i would just conclude by saying that enzymatic bioprocessing do does present vast opportunities for both product and process development to valorize sea food processing by products but there are challenges we need enzymes which can meet the end objectives we need technologies which are mature enough to reach commercialization we need we need scaling up as well as enzyme stability which are the current bottlenecks and we also need to achieve near zero discharge if possible uh, also oxidative and microbial spoilage uh, but modern biotechnology can provide answers to these challenges finally thank you next slide please thank you for the people who care about the environment our seafood as well thank you so much thank you so much ma'am there's a lot that can be done which is pretty obvious from your presentation i think it's about the time and uh, uh, the connection that we need to create uh, among different players to make it uh, feasible my next speaker uh, i would like to invite dr ak uh, balange for central from central institute of fisheries uh, education uh dr balange has a significant achievement in research and development that includes developing biotechnological protocols for the utilization of fish waste in the form of collagen gelatin chitin chitosan and many more he is also involved in creating value added uh, products and new product development by using fish and its by products so uh, dr balange thank you so much for joining please uh, let the uh, audience know what uh, you have for the processors how they can enable the circular economy and get more out of the waste over yeah. to you sir thank you so much suchitra madam and uh, uh, respected uh, dr jena sir uh, professor thorat sir uh, good morning to all Uh, jena sir if you are listening to me actually ravi shankar sir was to be i mean he was supposed to present uh, today but uh, uh, he is busy with uh, tomorrow's convocation and today we have academic council meeting so he asked me to present on his behalf so that's why i am presenting here from cif i am representing cif so i will share my presentation Yeah, oh, we can Madam. see. Sir. Yes, we can see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much once again. Welcome to all, uh, particularly students. Good morning. Today I will be talking on the utilization of waste, like to make it uh, uh, used back in our main economy. That is, we are calling it as a circular economy. So we have done uh, some work at uh, CIF Mumbai to utilize uh, the different body parts of uh, fish. Uh, that is actually not used for uh, consumption so i will be talking about it in short already a uh, lot of discussion on the resources uh, but still i would like to throw some light on the uh, fisheries resources globally and in india also so you can see there is a tremendous increase in the global fish production now almost 179 million metric tons uh, fish production is there and out of that 96.4 million tons comes from capture fisheries and uh, 82.6 million tons from aquaculture that is uh, fish farming 
and uh, if you see the wastage as per the fao report it is almost 27% of the total that is 179 million tons so it's a huge quantity of waste uh, that is there which can be utilized uh, for the development of different types of products so my guess was correct 27% <laughs> yeah yes <yeah, sir. laughs> so actually we have done some systematic studies in our lab uh, to see exactly how much waste is generated when we process the fish so this diagram you can see it is for pangaceous fish uh, we have dressed the fish and you can see the mince that is the edible part fish meat is 42 42% and rest 58% is all waste so in that waste also the major contribution is coming from head that is 22% followed by skin intestine bone and fins so all this waste material it has got very uh, uh, i mean uh, nutrition nutritional value because it is excellent source of all these proteins lipids some of the pigments carotenoids and some small bioactive compounds uh, then uh, further talking about uh, some of the algae or aquatic plants particularly seaweeds it has also got um, uh, a very good uh, nutraceutical value as we can extract uh, some of the bioactive compounds like phenolic compounds uh, these phenolic compounds are very dynamic in nature they have got a very good antioxidant and antimicrobial property so we have tried using this phenolic compounds as natural preservative to extend the shelf life of fish either during chill condition or uh, even in frozen condition we have also done the systematic study for the uh, indian major carps that is katla rohu and mrigal to see how much waste is actually generated and you can see here the actual uh, edible part that is uh, fish means it varies from 40 to 50% and it all depends on the species if you see, uh, katla if you see the maximum uh, contribution of waste comes from the head portion almost 30% and mrigal since katla is having a big head so obviously the head portion will contribute maximum in the west uh, on the contrary mirgal has got a very streamlined body with a small head so it has got uh, uh, less uh, contribution in the west stage and uh, higher contribution for edible part that is almost 50% so some of the products that we have developed in our laboratory by using some uh, enzymes or through the biotechnological interventions that i will discuss here uh, i will not go in detail about technology so just i will mention what we have done uh, we have used the pangaceous skin for the extraction of collagen as you all know that skin is a very good source for collagen and gelatin so usually this collagen is uh, acid soluble and uh, uh, like pre treatment they use acid and alkali so in this case we tried to use this pepsin enzyme uh, in order to avoid the use of chemicals so for that purpose you know we have to cut it into small pieces grind it with the chemicals or enzymes that we are using and once it is solubilized it will be further dialyzed to remove all the small molecular weight compounds and finally it is freeze dried so we will get the collagen in this form and the most important thing here from the economical point of view we are looking for the uh, maximum yield so you can see with the chemical processes uh we have got 7.7% yield and when we do it with pepsin then we can get almost uh, you know 10.31% uh, yield and the, this collagen we have done the study functional properties of collagen we have study studied in comparison to commercial collagen and we have found that uh, you know this uh, uh, collagen that is derived by enzymatic processes it has got better quality as compared to the one which is from the chemical treatment so this technology is available with us then we have also extracted the gelatin from the available for the extraction of gelatin again you know that pre treatment involves the use of chemicals so in this case what we have done we have tried to optimize the process uh, with the maximum yield of this gelatin and with the improved quality so with our process that we optimize we could able to get yield up to 19% of gelatin from the fish skin and whereas if you see uh, other processes they can go up to maximum up to 15% uh, 
So that one protocol we have developed and uh, applications of collagen and gelatin, of course, there are several applications, uh, especially in food industry, gelatin, it can be used as a thickener binding agent and to control the viscosity. At the same time, this collagen has got several uh, applications in pharmaceutical industry. So uh, these two technologies and products are available with us. Then the third waste part is fish viscera, which is most neglected. But then it, if it is uh, released in the environment without treatment, then it will uh, cause uh, you know, um, bad order and then of course, environmental pollution. So what we have done, we have prepared a visceral uh, you know, by giving uh, different treatments. We have compared with both chemical treatments by using uh, acid and alkali and we have used two enzymes. So here I would like to mention that we have got a very good results with the use of these enzymes, particularly pepsin. It has resulted in a, a good yield, almost 6% yield we have got with pepsin, pepsin uh, digestion. And uh, uh, the yield was further increased when we do freeze drying, almost 10% yield we have got. But then the cost factor is involved when we go for freeze drying. On the contrary, we have got uh, uh, around 6 to 6.5 percent yield for spray drying. So in that way, we can utilize this uh, visceral part of fish for making the protein hydrolysate, and which has got again several ap application as you know additives in feed formulation, or it can also be used as uh, uh, in uh, you know some uh, infant food formulation and all provided that the quality needs to be checked here. So this technology is also available with us. Then we have tried using the different bone parts from the fish, that is from the head portion, fins, and the actual body frame. And we have tried various treatments, particularly by using the water and uh, enzymes and alkali. So uh, what we found is uh, the better yield we can get with the uh, enzymatic process and uh, of course uh, the results have shown that alkali digestion has resulted in a, a higher yield and better quality but at the same time uh, to avoid the use of chemicals we have also seen that the one which is prepared with enzymes particularly pepsin it has also resulted in a, uh, a good yield which is not uh, i mean that less than the alkali uh, I mean, by chemical treatment. So this is one encouraging result we have got. We, we have the technology for making fish bone powder. Another thing we have done is uh, extraction of oil from the uh, viscera and from fish viscera and from surumi wash water. So uh, surumi actually it's a Japanese word used for uh, uh, mechanically washed fish means and this this becomes a raw material for making uh, different types of uh, analog product like the shrimp analog crab analog even sausages you know it can be prepared from the surumi so uh, the water that is being used you know one is to three percent uh, if one part of means then three part of water has to be used so a lot of water is being used that waste water contains several uh, so valuable uh, components from the fish and uh, in that way, like we can extract the oil. So we could able to extract a good amount, amount of crude and refined oil from fish visra as well as surumi wash water. We have checked its shelf life and uh, it can be kept for 30 days at room temperature. We have also done the fatty acid profiling of these oils and we found that uh, PUFAs were there in uh, higher quantities, particularly in uh, both uh, crude oil and refined oil. So another it's really uh, great to see. So how many more applications do you have, sir? I mean, it's really exciting to see so many. Yeah, yeah. Few, few more, few more, madam. So you know, this washing process uh, for uh, in surumi industry it results uh, in removal of sarcoplasmic protein. So again, you know, we can revert, recover the sarcoplasmic protein from this wash water by using various treatments. So like you know. We got with 10% uh, TCA, uh, around 5% yield we can get for this uh, sarcoplasmic protein, which again can be used in feed formulation and other application. So uh, chitin is being extracted uh, and, and uh, as it was discussed, there are industries 
in india very few industries uh, like in kochi then chennai and uh, gujarat also is there so basically they use uh, uh, sodium hydroxide and uh, hydrochloric acid for the two important steps in uh, chitin formation that is deproteinization and demineralization so we have tried to use the bacteria here that is halobacterium uh, selenarium for deproteinization and lactococcus lactis for demineralization so we try to avoid the use of chemicals these protocols are with us we have a pilot facility for doing this work and uh, we have one student incubator also who is working on this slide and some of the products for human consumption from the under utilized resources like acetus it's a non finite prawn and uh, its landing is uh, uh, quite good in mumbai coast so uh, we could utilize this acetus for making this kind of extruded product so the technology for this is also available for us the most important and challenging thing is incorporation of this acetus powder uh, which is having uh, a protein animal protein which can affect the uh, textural properties particularly the crispiness and puffiness of this extruded product so we could able to control that and we could also able to increase the concentration of acetus to make it uh, like you know the protein content of final product is almost 19% as compared to the snacks uh, which are made of from starch and available in the market so this is available with us we have also tried making the extruded products from the seaweed you can see this is ulva and uh, we have tried uh, from different seaweeds but we found the one which is prepared from ulva it is having a very good acceptability then the extract as i was talking from the seaweed particularly phenolic compounds we have extracted this phenolic compounds from the seaweed and we use it as a preservative so for uh, in uh, our lab we tried with tilapia uh, that fish uh, it has increased the shelf life of this fish by 6 days when we uh, treat it with uh, 1.5 or 2% uh, and uh, do it for i mean keep it for ice condition so it can be kept 6 more days as compared to control another thing is seaweed based edible coatings for frozen storage we have used uh, 1% of uh, this seaweed extract along with uh, sodium alginate and uh, you can see after giving the deep treatment it will form a very thin biodegradable film around the sticks you see here fish sticks so you know uh, we could able to increase the shelf life by 3 months under frozen condition by this treatment so like that there are a lot of uh, other technologies available with us so due to time constraint i could not able to explain all but definitely those who are interested they can contact us and uh, we have agri business incubation center in cife so we can uh, incubate uh, the budding entrepreneurs or the companies who wants to take the technology from us so we are there to help you so definitely you can contact us so thank you so much i hope i have finished in time thank you thank you so much dr balange i mean it was really nice to see so many product developments can happen uh, using uh, you know by products and based from uh, from uh, seafood processing uh, next uh, uh, speaker is uh, amit satyan ravi uh, he is a regional business manager for food and protein uh, at nova signs uh, he would be talking very uh, focusing on uh, what enzymes can do all this while you have been listening about all the technologies what all can be done and here the focus is more on enzymes over to you amit thank you sister uh, thank you for that lovely introduction uh, can i share my screen so uh, on behalf of novozymes i i really want to um, congratulate able team and uh, give us and thankful for the opportunity that you have given uh, on a personal note it's actually uh, something which is of privilege and honor for me to uh, to present among such learned people from academia and and the industry so without uh, wasting much time so i'll i'll get back to the to the ppt the discussion so uh, from novozymes perspective uh, we are looking at uh, a presentation on fish and shrimp waste upcycling through bio innovation so um, coming to a bit of introduction of novozymes um, novozymes is the leading biotech company based in uh, denmark and it's a market leader when you talk about industrial enzymes Uh, we have presence in over 130 countries with a employee base of 6500 people 
the most interesting part for us, for me personally speaking, as an employee of Novozymes, we invest heavily in our R&D efforts, as in the 14 to 15% of our turnover goes, goes for R&D activity. And more than 20% of our force workforce is, is into R&D of new, new patents and products. So that's where, that's where our focus is. Uh, we want to create a world where bio-innovation is something which is of sustainable nature. So this is our motto. Uh, together we find biological answers for better lives in a growing world so that the world of tomorrow will be sustainable not in terms of only a better product but in terms of uh, uh, lessening of uh, energy usage making products which are sustainable for the environment as well and uh, if you talk about novozymes uh, for us everything begins with the smallest of the compounds so our core, our bread and butter is enzymes and microorganisms, which is actually a, a natural phenomenon in the environment itself. So what they do for, for our perspective is they catalyze all the processes. They uh, fasten up the process of making the product uh, uh, ready and that in a very sustainable manner. So just to give you a bird's eye view, we are present in all the industries, right from uh, uh, cleaner clothes to nutrition and food to fuels wherein um, biofuels and a lot of different products are there and in the in the backward integration wherein agricultural yields can also be improved from through our solutions so coming to uh, the subject in, in focus here so uh, as as dr rick and dr balange has already covered this i'll just give you a snapshot of what indian coastline is all about so Indian coastline is close to uh, even more than 7,500 kilometers, wherein, if you'll see, the west part is more predominantly making fish, as in uh, harvesting fish, and the east part is more into shrimps, cultivation of shrimps. And uh, if you talk about exports uh, of, of this seafood, so we have seen that uh, there was an in increase in the last decade or so with, with, with a very healthy CAGR. But in the last three or four years, there's a bit of decline in terms of exports of seafood. So uh, for me, I'm taking it as a as a positive thing that probably the domestic consumption of this high yield uh, high high end product has increased because because if you if you talk about the production, it's it's healthily increasing as per Dr. Rekha also. Uh, we have been export, exporting to 120 countries, and this sector specifically contributes to 1.1 percent of uh, India's GDP, which is which is significant enough for this industry and for, for government focus to be in, in this industry. So talking about value addition in terms of uh, what we can do in fish and shrimp to be specific, uh, everybody has covered the parts of what exactly is the, uh, is the waste product which is there. So as in a nutshell, it's 50% of the, the, the anatomy of, the, of, of fish and shrimp is something that is not used in the... Uh, in the final food in, in the edible meat and there's a significant opportunity in terms of value addition so let's say if i'll if i'll if i'll speak about fish there's a there's a huge opportunity in making collagens and other products uh, uh bioactive peptides as well wherein uh, you can make it from scale, skin scales and bones and make it as a pharmaceutical ingredient yeah however the purity would be required uh, again, uh, if not pharma, it can go as a nutraceutical ingredient, wherein you talk about specific amino acids and specific ingredient in, in use. Apart from that, seasonings, uh, pet food and animal food is always there because uh, it can inhale. Amit, we are not able to hear you. Uh, maybe I can I can continue till uh, he comes uh, through again. Uh, so there is a huge possibility how we can utilize this not just for the pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, and seasoning as well as in pet food and animal feed. The next is more of a uh, you know where enzyme can be uh, added in this entire process. Um, um, so whenever, uh, suppose for example, you uh, get a fillet out of it and uh, once the fillet is out, which is a high value product, the remaining meat, bone and all that usually goes as a waste. So that's the place where enzyme can be added for further hydrolysis of the protein so that uh, you, know, the, you get more of a hydrolysis. And at the same time, the bone comes out very clean and you can uh, you know, further process that for more value addition. 
Yeah, I mean, over to you. Sorry, some some issue with the connection here. Yeah. So, in terms of application, what what we were talking about. So, um, when you when you have a base to process, currently, uh, what what is being done in the industry is majority of the waste is going as an agricultural feed, wherein it is used as a fertilizer, wherein the value addition in terms of the economics of it is not great. So, if you'll see this this product portfolio. If somebody is making a pharmaceutical ingredient or, or a nutraceutical ingredient, the value addition in terms of the final value of the product is very high. So even if somebody is uh, upscaling or uh, upscaling the waste material and then doing a capex activity in his, his or her plant, that will make sense in the in a longer run and in, in, in a more sustainable manner as well. So that's where you get a lot of value from uh, even the waste or the byproduct that you generate during processing. Coming to uh, a very, uh, I would say, uh, uh, a, a general processing of what is happening in uh, in industry and what we have seen and where we can value it in terms of enzymatic activity. So when fish and fish or any seafood comes uh, after cutting, nibbling, and knobbing, uh, the very first process wherein you can see uh, the bread and butter of the industry wherein canned uh, fish or seafood which is being exported in the market. During the processing, during the pre-cooking of it, you'll get a lot of discharge liquid, which contains a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, ingredient which can be uh, segregated and made uh, byproducts. That's where enzymes can uh, play. As Dr. Balange was mentioning, uh, uh, it's it's already being done through a, a lot of chemicals and all. But uh, having said that, if enzymes are being used, there's a there's a chance of lesser uses of chemicals. You'll have a cleaner la cleaner labor product, which is more valuable than the than the product which is made by other chemicals. You're you you'll be saving much on the energy part, and it will be more uh, viable if you're exporting such kind of products because the whole industry, let's say, if the whole food industry is going towards uh, cleaner labor solutions, and that's where uh, our solutions comes into as a perfect fit. So that's one wherein the uh, the liquid discharge is being further processed to uh, solubles or even uh, value added products. The second byproduct is the solid waste in terms of fish bones, scales, viscera, wherein these are either made into fish soluble paste, fish fish mill hydrolysates, and uh, in somewhere it can be uh, a future process. Some some of the aspects that we can see is. Uh, probably segregating uh, lower low, lower chain microbial peptides, uh, even some specific amino acids, value added products like protein extract and collagens. So that's where we play in terms of understanding what exactly uh, you are doing in your processing and what value addition you can do um, in a in a shorter run and in a longer run, both perspective in in, in place. So uh, in a nutshell, if I'll if I'll talk about the applications that we have. Um, so, uh, Dr. Rekha was uh, mentioning different enzymes in terms of transglutaminase, lipases, and proteases, which can which can do value addition. So, if I'll if I'll take an example of proteases, we do have a lot of different ranges of proteases like exoprotease, uh, endoproteases, uh, even flavor modifying proteases. So, what we do is uh, basic the requirement of our uh, customer. Uh, whether they require lower chain peptides, whether they need to reduce the viscosity of the product so that the throughput of the plant is good, or whether they need a value-added product like collagens or hydrolysates. So that's where uh, our customized solutions is there. So if I can tabulate and give you bullet points, is first is viscosity reduction, wherein uh, you can have customized degree of hydrolysis, whatever KDA you need in terms of uh, molecular weight of the final product that can be customized. Uh, that viscosity reduction can happen with a lot of byproducts, uh, even even we can do uh, collagen, hydrolysates, all the all all the various uh, products that you can see, basis uh, the demand of the market. So, so the uh, in a nutshell, what what we are trying to convey is uh, through enzymes, you can have a cleaner label and sustainable bioconversion of your byproduct, and that's where. Uh, uh, by using lesser of chemicals and energy, you are making a sustainable product, uh, which is something of interest in the market right now. And uh, a value creation in that perspective will will actually help us in creating a, a better environment for all of us. So that's where Novozymes comes into picture. 
And uh, for us, uh, we need to differentiate in terms of understanding where the market is moving in. Basis that uh, we optimize and expand the portfolio uh, and and the solutions that we have. Um, so that's it from my end. Yeah, I could see your contact details on the screen. So anyone who would like to know more, want to get more information, can get in touch with Amit. Uh, thank you, Amit. Thank you, Sister. So our next speaker. Uh, Dr. Shivkumar uh, M. from he is the Dean College of Fisheries, Mangalore, and he is also heading the Advanced Biotech uh, Innovation Center for Aquamarine. And uh, we would uh, he would be talking about compounding effects of biotechnology, which is quite interesting to really know what could be the uh, effects um, of biotechnology in seafood processing. Uh, Dr. Shivkumar, over to you. Please hold on. Yeah. So, just take it. Open this up. Just to inform all the uh, the audience that we have run out of time for the Q and A, but we will get back to you in mails, uh, whatever way we can. Uh, we'll we'll try to wind up this in five minutes, but please bear with us for a few one or two minutes more. So, Chitra, we can take a few questions. Sir. No, since yeah, yeah. Already there. Oh. Yeah, I think a lot of them has already been answered uh, in the process itself. There's one question from you know, on the uh, process, and uh, uh, yeah, so this is more on the tools on circular economy. Uh, uh, we are having trouble getting collaboration in the economy still within India. How can we get in touch and start using these technologies? So any any speaker would like to take it up? That's a very valid question and difficult one to answer as well. So I'm, I'm sure just one person can't do it. It has to be a collaborative uh, uh, you know, effort academia industry as well as uh, by the uh, uh, you know thought leadership in the government uh, what i would say probably there is no straight answer to that but this is just the beginning how we can enable uh, you know creating the awareness making sure that the industry knows about it and then working along with them to make sure we are uh, somewhat uh, you know at least beginning uh, the process of circular economy uh, Dr. Shiv Kumar, are you ready or uh, you're able to share your screen? He is muted. So, Suchitra, there was also a question. Some of the products and technologies which the public, public institutions talked about. So, the questioner is asking whether these are all patented or is it available for industry for licensing? No? So, we can take it up. I think we're trying to share here. Yeah, sure. Uh, Dr. Balange and Dr. Rekha, uh, if you can uh, let them know because these are free for the industry to use it. Yeah, Madam, for that question, you know, that uh, uh, it's absolutely right what you mentioned. Uh, many people are working on this line, you know. Uh, industry, they have got uh, their own R&D and academia, they are doing uh, in their own way. So there is a need that we should... Uh, uh, channelize all these efforts in one direction and uh, this type of webinars and all uh, other type of conferences and all it will help in connecting us with the industry people so we have some technology as i have shown in my slides so yeah. those technologies are low cost and what we have targeted you know the bottleneck in waste management is collection of waste when you talk about the capture fisheries, you will get the fish in tons. So that when you process it in industry, it will be easy for you to get the raw material, waste material from one point. But when it comes to the uh, small retail markets and particularly our uh, freshwater fishes, you know, uh, so that is a major challenge. So what we are trying, we are trying to develop low cost uh, technologies wherein, you know, um, uh, some... Uh, uh, People, they can even do it at their home or within a group yeah. so in that locality. We are trying to develop a model so that it can be implemented everywhere. You know? yeah, so sure. 
that is one thing and uh, yes there are some technologies which are patented some uh, high end technologies it is patented uh, but some technologies are available open i mean uh, yeah looks like dr said, chef kumar is able to uh, uh, can you operate it from your side yeah uh, yeah andrila can you do that sure we will we'll try uh, there was one question on uh, what is the fufa content uh, of the uh, you know that you talk about the fish oil yeah yeah so that again varies from uh, raw material like we have extracted from the visira and uh, from the surmi i mean that wash water so in that we could able to i mean we have done fatty acid profiling so we got around 2 2% percentage area uh, i mean 2% of those pufa we have i mean we have seen all right yeah over to you doctor <clears throat> Yeah, Shiv Kumar is there. Yes, yes. yes uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Uh, I'm seeing uh, the circular economy of uh, seafood industry from a different perspective. Uh, I worked in the University of Agricultural Sciences for almost 17 years. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, next slide. Our country is producing three or six million tons of food grains, and uh, it is all-time highest. Next slide, please. In spite of producing three or six million tons of food. 20 crores of people are suffering from hunger and you know the the country's population is 138 crores so in last 65 years indian council of agriculture research uh, with the support of 18000 scientists we could increase food production by 5 times fish production by 15 times egg production by 48 times meat production by 10 times all that is fine but uh, we could do all these uh, through conventional science Uh, so far, so good. But uh, to move uh, further, to eradicate hunger, to produce quality food, we need to take the best advantages of biotechnology. That's what I, I, I want to say. Next slide, please. Look at this. Uh, uh, as of now, the world is producing 178.8 million tons of fish, and 85 percent of the fisheries is overfished, and it is declining. We are emptying the ocean. and aquaculture uh, on the other hand it is increasing and our country is producing 14.5 million tons of uh, fish where we are exporting 11.5 lakh tons of uh, fish and fisheries products predominantly it is from the shrimp and earning 48000 crores of rupees as foreign exchange circular economy i view it in a different way i i'll say it is inclusive economic growth not but we don't have to export now earlier we were dependent on us and other uh, developing countries our country the purchasing power is increased significantly and our country can accommodate uh, the processed foods and advanced foods and do wonders and money should circulate among the stakeholders that's how the country's growth you know can you know visible next slide so now uh, we were uh, uh, worrying about the food now we are worrying about the nutrients we may produce more protein but other essential nutrients in fact hidden hunger is a serious issue globally and uh, infant mortality rates and diseases related to uh, you know the hunger are the serious issues uh, no that what this what uh, it is not just the food it is the quality food next slide and you know globally uh, 3 million people you know completely dependent on fish and fisheries products and uh, most of uh, the countries uh, where the economy is poorer there the aquatic foods are, are playing significant role next next in eradicating hunger according to uh, world health organization they recommend uh, 20.3 kg of fish consumption uh, for any uh, healthy adult But as of now, the fish per capita availability in the country is 12.8. In Karnataka, is 8. So now, uh, from moving from 12.8 to uh, 20 is a big task. That's what uh, the role of biotechnology is. Uh, you know, the evidence significant. We have to harness, and we cannot go on doing research for uh, you know hundreds of years. And already, lot of uh, knowledge is known. We are still busy in. Uh, Uh, i you know understanding the basics now there a lot of uh, science is already 
uh, advanced. So now we have to convert the science into production, production into money. The next slide. The India's requirement by 2025, we need 350 million tons of food, 20 million tons of fish. The likewise, we have set a big target by 2025. So now uh, it, it cannot happen with the limited land. We have uh, 152 million hectares of uh, arable land because of the continuous usage of same land for same purpose, excessive usage of nutrients, fertilizers, all these lands are you know, becoming low productive. Some lands, about 9.6 million hectares, about 23% of the irrigated land is said to be saline and alkaline. Uh, it is white plague in agriculture. So we have to produce more from the less, less area. So in that context, we have a greater role. Uh, next. So now, what to change? Uh, we have to change thinking, production system, scale, technology, processing. In all these production systems, technology and processing, biotechnology should play a significant role. Of course, uh, 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 companies like uh, Noozymes, Novartis, and um, um, Sun Pharma, they are already uh, doing wonderful work. They are into all possible fields. Now, the challenge is using the biotechnology under research, we need to, to produce the same products uh, with least cost, least efforts. So that's our challenge now. The science is known. So next slide. So now, now we have to, using the biological technology, we have to solve the problems of the country. Next. So now, the quality food. See, earlier, uh, you were just bothered about the uh, 2,800 calories of uh, energy, but most of the third world countries where they have uh, no, uh, uh, anemic, uh, diabetic, and eye problem, and some of the fishes, they have rich in vitamin, vitamin A, uh, beta carotenoids. So through you know, the, uh, recombinant technology, biotechnological approaches, these the responsible genes can be uh, extracted, amplified in the regular fishes, which can be produced uh, in bulk so that the, the people who cannot afford will be able to um, achieve the requirement of the nutrients. Next, next slide. So this is uh, the very important uh, slide of my presentation. We are doing well uh, because of the vastness of the country. India is doing well in, in terms of milk, papaya, jute, ginger. We have 3.28 million square kilometer. Uh, but look at the countries who are doing well in other products and look at the production difference. So India must uh, move from production to productivity. So for that, we need uh, the biotechnological approaches. Next. So these issues are there in the country for last uh, uh, 65 years, poor land holding, poor capital, all those issues. But the problem is they're still there in different uh, uh, proportion. So that's why less water, less land, less manpower, less cost, uh, we should be able to produce the in country's requirement. So definitely uh, biotechnological approaches will offer varied level of approaches uh, so that we can produce the quality food, safe food, uh, environmentally friendly foods. Next, next slide. Uh, sir, with interest of time, if you have any uh, examples, can we uh, go to that? Which That's will what. Help the uh, so biotechnology can help to produce more food through selective breeding. Already, uh, CIFA has produced Jainti Rohu. It's a selectively bred fish where it grows faster. And our university has developed our carp. It is the selectively bred common carp fish grows 28% faster matures later, more methyl. So monosex using 17 alpha methyl testosterone, we are produced because in fishes, they are dimorphism. Some sexes grows faster. We are able to produce monosex uh, fishes so that we can produce more fish uh, through applied and deployed technology. We can produce the uh, desirable trait in the fish and seedless, color, fast growing, disease resistant, all that is possible and it's happening, it's happening. And untapped resources from marine system, it is plenty. You know, though we have 8,000 tons, it's not 7,000 funded, 8,000 tons eight kilometers of rivers, uh, you know, 1.97 lakh kilometers of uh, rivers, 8,000 tons eight kilometers of coastline. 
and 3.15 million hectares of reservoirs, we have plenty of aquatic resources, but 80% of the agar is coming from other countries where uh, it is used in the beverage industry, it is coming from other countries. That's why our PM has called all the coastal states to produce seaweeds using the coastal women folk and so that they get the uh, uh, income and we can produce more um, agar, alginates, gelatin, such other products and they have uh, you know, multiple usage in the pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, etc. Next, next slide. And uh, of course, uh, you know, um, uh, in Kashmir, uh, there are goats uh, which are resistant for cold. And veterinary, since I'm from the veterinary university, uh, our uh, scientists are working on the cold resistant genes so that uh, in, in the southern peninsula or India, our goats and sheep are very susceptible for cold and pneumonia, they die. So that people are working on uh, the cold resistant uh, sheep breeds in our state. Next question. Next slide. And uh, since uh, the, the marine catches are declining and we are emptying the oceans and the natural water bodies, many countries have come out with uh, mimic products. In fact, the low value fishes are uh, um, harvested, we pick up the meat, and we come out with the mimic products. Mimic product, preparing mimic products is not simple because we have to understand the, the chemistry, biogenic chemistry uh, of the meat and come out with the right consistency, right gelatinization. So a lot of works have been done. And now using the 3D printing technology, people can prepare uh, the plant-based salmon meat, soya-based fish meat without adding the crab meat uh, we can come out with the crab claw. Uh, only we, uh, flavonoids and the essence of the crabs are incorporating the new functional foods and making huge profit. So definitely uh, our seafood industry, uh, as uh, uh, everybody knows, uh, 50 to 60% of the waste uh, is generated from the industry. But now we have to come out with uh, the, the technologies which are economically viable. So unless we understand the scale, we know through scales we can extract the guanine. But uh, if we don't get the scales in bulk, if we don't do the process uh, at an economical scale, it will not be economically viable. So that's why, uh, that's why we need to have a right integration, understand the scale, minimum of scale of economy. Otherwise, all of our efforts, in spite of uh, the existing uh, science knowledge base, we cannot harness the beauty of the science if you don't understand the economics part. We are busy in understanding the uh, numbers. So that's history. So we must move from the science into money. So that's what the things are happening uh, in uh, the seafood industry, agriculture industry, things are definitely uh, happening. Uh, yeah. But now our challenge is to come out with cost-effective technology. Uh, next, next slide, next. Uh, so we could see you have so uh, quite many interesting topics uh, that can be shared with the audience. Yes, 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 yes. Can we share your presentation post uh, the, the talk? Uh, I'll, I'll send you the updated one. Yeah. Uh, please send it. Because we already 15 minutes over time. Just run and through. I could see that you have many interesting things. Uh, Just uh, uh, run, through, run through my slides for yeah. one minute. It will be over. Right. So now uh, uh, we are trying to extract the because earlier the bycatch from the sea it was only six to seven percent. Now it is increased to seventy percent. So now uh, as an alternative fish meal because fish meal is used in the poultry industry, um, cattle industry as a protein uh, uh, source. But now we are trying to uh, uh, grow black soldier fly. Uh, from the domestic waste and trying to look for other alternatives and uh, these black soldiers fly in uh, protein can be replaced the uh, fish meal. So that's how we can conserve our environment resources. Next slide, next slide. Look at this meatless meat. Run through, run through, please. Golden rice, which is rich in vitamin A. So we have understood the entire uh, zebra fish uh, it, 
the, the same concepts can be uh, un, you know, used in the drug delivery, understanding the human genomes. So things are happening. Yes. Next, next slide. This is the fish uh, which is rich in vitamin A, Amola. Uh, so World Fish has taken a huge project from the Melinda Gates Foundation and trying to culture this fish in all the poorer states. And uh, as a midday meal concept, they are trying to supply this uh, Amola. Uh, and uh, trying to extract the genes. This is the uh, plant-based uh, salmon meat, uh, uh, no, heavy metal free, pesticides free. And uh, it is, uh, no, the, the, the new person cannot make out whether it is uh, real salmon or the plant-based salmon. Next. The mimic uh, crab meat. Next. Okay, next, next. Patties. This is the company from Bangalore where I'm uh, one of the mentors. They are preparing uh, soya-based uh, meat uh, and um, uh, they'll be one of the startups uh, you know, to whom we are supporting from uh, the Advanced Biotech Innovation Center, Aquamarine, which is uh, supported by KTEC and Abel is one of the stakeholders in the Hebic Aquamarine, which is uh, started in College of Physics, Bangalore. Next, next slide. Anyway, uh, it's all known uh, thing. This is the Advanced Biotech Innovation Center sponsored by KITS, where ABLE is one of the partners soon. We'll come out with uh, some of the startups who are already into the uh, uh, biotechnological uh, um, approaches to come out with new functional foods and such other uh, 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 advantages. Next. Next, next slide. So our, our college has developed the SDS page uh, uh, no, PCR based uh, uh, no, kit where using the sample on the site itself, we can uh, identify the presence of uh, pathogen or not. Earlier, it used to take uh, seven days to detect the uh, wild spot disease. So now, uh, based on the sensors, we can, within uh, three minutes, we can uh, identify the presence of pathogen so that it is useful in uh, decision making, in aqua farming, in stream farming, particularly. Next slide. I could see applications okay. everywhere. So finally, uh, this is my conclusion. Biotechnological, the conclusion, please. Biotechnology, biotechnological, biotechnology can save the mankind by saving the time efforts provided by a technologist takes up the issue-based research and work as a team irrespective of the region. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, my apologies for not being able to uh, you know, give the right time. Uh, because there's so many interesting things to talk about. Uh, all I can say is circular economy is no more a buzzword and it's the reality and it's a necessity today. And it's very interesting to see so many possibilities. All I can say to the uh, attendees uh, that please feel free to reach out to each of them, all the speakers to know more. This webinar is just to give you a flavor of what can be done. But if you want to more, more de know more details, please reach out to them. I would like to thank everyone in this ABLE, uh, ICT Mumbai, all the speakers here, uh, CFA, Fisheries College, Mangalore, um, for giving this opportunity, giving their time, and uh, you know, making sure that this webinar is a success, and we get the right audience, and we make sure that the technology is heard by the industry what is uh, there as a possibility. So with this note, uh, I would like to officially close this, though we are some, uh, you know, 48, uh, sorry, 50, 18 minutes delay. But uh, I, I'm, I hope it's worth for all the audience uh, what they have heard today, seen today. Uh, all I can say, this is just the beginning. Uh, have a great day, all of you, and thank you so much once again uh, for being part of this. Gitra, just a closing announcement from Abel. So, yeah. for all the student participants, we'll send a feedback from so that uh, you can indicate whether you need a participation certificate or not, and based on it, we will be mailing you the uh, participation certificate. Uh, thank you all once again. Thank you, Sujitra, Novazai, and Professor Tarat, and all the speakers for a uh, Wonderful session. This is the longest uh, webinar we have done. Normally, uh, 
60 minutes, uh, but it's, it is worth it. Very, very interesting. Another facet of uh, an emerging technology within the biotechnology, because I'm sure we will have, I think, to Jitra, and we have discussed many more such interactions only on this, uh, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll reconvene once again after a couple of months when the Jitran team are ready. Thank you all so much. And have a Thank you. Thank you, Suresh. I Thank think you. Just a couple of minutes, uh, Suchitra. Yeah. It's been wonderful. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, it is almost like a curtain raiser for the activities that uh, <coughs> we are planning in the future. And uh, of course, you know, bringing all the stakeholders together, like uh, what Shiva Kumar has already said, you know, he wants would like to go from production to productivity and science to technology. And he spoke very nicely about the numbers, you know, because he's as the number cruncher. So uh, I think uh, this is a, it's a good advice from uh, uh, Shiva Kumar also. And I think uh, Amit Satyan, uh, I think he took us very nicely about the role of enzymes uh, in the future. So what I'm planning to do is along with my students, two of my students who are uh, listening to this, uh, one is Dr. Mr. Prashant Kumar and other is Ankita, which Chitra knows very well. They are under her tutelage. So they will come out with the uh, write-up based on uh, today's uh, uh, interaction. So maybe we, 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 will, we will make a nice article uh, and all the speakers will be authors in that. So we will send the prepared article to you for corrections, individual corrections. Amit, Shiva, Shiva Kumar, Balange, and everyone. Is that, that sounds okay, uh, Suchitra? Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, we can so, so, take it uh, so, further offline, yeah, yes. That, that, that will be good. So I will need the presentations from everyone so that you know we can put it in a very cohesive manner. Uh, so I think uh, wonderful, you know, it's, it's been a wonderful listening to all the experts. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Is it ma'am? I'll send you my article. Yes, yes. Uh, because uh, I'm a teacher, I'm, normally we speak for 60 minutes. <laughs> but in eight minutes, no, no the, issue, sir. No I did not miss the flow. People missed the flow, that's all. <laughs> so I'll send you my write up. Yeah. We'll circulate among the. Yeah, we circulate. Presentation. Suresh, we are offline. Not presentation. presentation. Please don't save the presentation. That is the only the cue I take. Mm. So that's only for my. Presentation, you will not get the complete statements. No, no, we are live only. I'll send you the article, sir. Article, I'll send you. The write up, I'll send you, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. Done, sir. Thank you so much for your support.